All right, let's begin the final day of SEO week. Welcome everyone to SEO week 5.0. My name is Heather Desette and I am the marketing and event coordinator here at NetElixir. I'll be your host for today. Thank you again for our partners at UPS, LizTrack, Bright Edge, Bing, and Google for joining us on our final day. Also, a special thank you to our clients, all new and returning SEO week attendees. We appreciate your constant support and we'll continue covering SEO topics today. So we'll begin our sessions now. Please remember to add any questions that come to mind in our chat box. Our speaker will answer your questions at the end of today's presentation, which will focus on how to understand indexing and how to use technical SEO with the Google Web Console. This year, we have a lot of new SEO week first timers. For those of you just tuning in for this knowledge celebration, I would like to share with you the history behind SEO week. NetElixir started SEO week five years ago. We launched SEO week to address the challenges online retailers were facing in SEO. And since it is our specialty, we are passionate about sharing our solutions. Part of NetElixir's core value structure is to constantly share knowledge to the online retail community. Our team is always monitoring the change in landscapes in SEO. We had a lot of great topics this week, but of course we saved the best for last. Today we'll discuss how to understand indexing and how to use technical SEO with the Google Web Console. For today's presentation, I would like to introduce to you NetElixir's very own SEO director, Hala Ali. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Welcome, Hala. Thank you for joining us. Before Hala begins our presentation, I did want to take a moment to talk to you about NetElixir. Here at NetElixir, we are comprised of over 130 fanatically analytical global search marketers dedicated to helping retailers find and acquire new customers online. Since 2004, our data-intensive approach and deep retail expertise have delivered success for hundreds of brands in a highly competitive marketplace. So to begin, we'll start off with our first poll question. Okay, so everyone, we would like to know what is your level of expertise with Google Web Console? Please take a moment to answer the poll question you see on your screen. Okay, it looks like we have a good mix in the audience today. So without further ado, I would like to introduce to you today's speaker, Hala Ali. Thanks, Heather. So before we begin the actual technical aspect of this presentation today, I wanted to give everyone some context into why the technical health of the website is important I, and why as business owners, e-commerce managers, and digital marketing managers, you have to understand the impact of the technical aspect of your website on the business as a whole. Search engines provide a source of index documents from the internet that can be rapidly scanned. Everything's happening within milliseconds. However, as the number of documents in the internet grows, it takes a, even longer time periods between the time when a page is crawled by a robot and the time it can be indexed and made available to a search engine. Furthermore, it takes even longer to replace or update the page once it's indexed. So considering that search engines are commercial interfaces, the longer it takes for them to crawl a web page, the more investment is needed to support the growth. This is where the technical health of your website comes in. Since crawling the millions of the websites to determine which documents should be prioritized can cost millions of dollars, crawlers may at times ignore sites that fail to meet the predefined criteria. So what does that mean? Google did not update their search console from the goodness of their heart. It was costing them money because the ambiguity in the search remained. Webmasters were working hard, developers were working hard, search, and, uh, search engine optimizers, SEOs were working hard. But the Google Webmaster Master Console was so basic that it was pretty hard to make everyone understand what did the bots really look for. So the 
three things that you have to really look at as organic, you know, as an organic expert is that how is the bot crawling your website? Second step is how is it indexing it? And the third is obviously ranking according to the relevance of the search queries. So the crucial question for any SEO strategy should be, how are the bots crawling and indexing the website? Because if they're not crawling it properly and then the indexing is not taking it properly, you will not see that return. So with the new Webmaster Console, a lot of the ambiguity that was there before has been removed and technical SEO has become even more efficient. Does that mean again, are organic experts no longer needed? No, it just means we can work much better with the technical team so that we can explain to them and show them what impact the changes they make are having on the website health in the end affecting the revenue you need to show. So this is a snapshot of what it looks like once you log into the search console. I haven't gone into, you know, we didn't go into the very basics of it, how to set it up. We're assuming everyone here knows what the search console is. So the, this is what you see when you log in. Right there, you see the snapshot of how everything is looking. If you click on overview, URL inspection, coverage, sitemaps, mobile usability products, those are the most important aspects of our console. So what should you be looking at? The most important thing you should be looking at is the overview. You click the overview, you click the overview and this is the graph you see. You see the performance and you see the coverage. Now the coverage is what is going to show you how your site is performing. This is a great amount of coverage because errors are minimal and the valid pages are looking good. What you have to keep an eye on every week, and yes, we mean every week, is how those errors are trending. You might have made a change on your website that you don't know how it's going to impact that. You might have recently migrated your website from one platform to another. You need to understand how that errors or error trend is progressing. You want to make sure it remains consistent or goes lower. And this is what you can, as business advisors, understand, right? If you're a, not a developer and you're not an organic expert, this will give you a quick snapshot of how your teams are doing. And that I believe is the most important thing to do. You don't need to be an expert in the console, but you do need to identify the various issues so that if the teams inform you of certain problems, you are aware of them and can see whether those are trending down or not. Second is the coverage. Now this is, I think, one of the best thing Google's done in a very long time for organic search. Just knowing that they do very little for organic experts for us to understand what's happening, this is great right? In just one snapshot, you can understand what is really going crazy on your website. That's the red aspect. The yellow is, okay, you're in the yellow. You need to start improving stuff. Valid means great, excluded, what is being crawled, but not indexed. So this is a very good visual of what your websites look, look like. So you should be looking at the errors, warnings, and even the valid excluded URLs to ensure that Google bots are viewing and indexing your website the way you have set up the web architecture in terms of importance. So consider the errors. When we look at the errors, we see over here 420 errors. Now, what are those errors? We see submitted URL mark no index. Submitted URL means a URL you have identified in the sitemap and submitted to Google. Second is submitted URL has crawl issues. Then you have server errors, and then you have submitted URL not found. Now, if you're submitting something to the sitemap, you have to make sure it's a canonical URL serving a source code 200. Because if you're not, you're giving Google the wrong signal. You're telling them, hey, these are all my important URLs, but if you start getting too many errors there, Google's gonna say the signals this company, this brand gives me are not always correct. So I won't look at those signals and I'm gonna just assume something from my end because the bots, again, need to prioritize. Imagine this, you've submitted 500 URLs and you get errors from 400 of them. Again, a signal in terms of prioritization that your site is now a priority because it's taking a lot of crawl budget from the Google bots. They don't want to pay for your mistakes. So they're just going to stop coming to your website as frequently to crawl. So as you click through the error list and check the URLs, you can see the URLs marked no index. You have to make sure it's not a mistake. 
having the no index there is no problem at all. And if your developer says, hey, that's a normal thing, yes, it is a normal thing. But why is Google showing it as an error is something that we have to understand. The first thing just off the bat is, why did you submit it if it was no index? That's a conflict right there. You're telling Google, we blocked it from the no index tag. That means we don't want it indexed, but here you go, please index it. So again, that's one conflict right there. If it is correct, just remove the URLs from the sitemap. If, if the URLs were added as a no index by mistake, which let me tell you happens all the time. We have made the same mistake. We put a no index on one page, happens to be the developer has put it across all the web pages, ensuring that the site is no longer getting indexed. It's a very SEO 101 error that developers make all the time. So you have to make sure that you know why the no index is there. And if it is there deliberately, please remove it from the sitemap. Once you've done that, removed it from the sitemap, validate the fix. Very important. Unless you tell Google you have deliberately fixed the error, they're going to ignore that for a very long time. So to ensure that your crawl budget is used as best as possible, validate the fix after making sure it's been fixed. If you just make changes to two, three pages and say, hey, let me submit this, then go forward. Again, wrong signals to the Google bot. Google does not want to pay for your mistakes. So moving forward, warnings. What can be the warnings? Again, we have the same issue, right? We see indexed, though blocked by robots.txt. What does that mean? It means that it's getting indexed, even though you and the developer are telling Google from the robots.txt that you don't want this page crawled. So why is that happening? Why is Google not respecting the robots.txt tag you have placed? And what is causing this conflicting tag or signal? The only reason Google will not respect that robots.txt file is when they feel there's something going on or they feel that even though you've blocked it, the users find that page important. Again, it comes down to UX. A lot of times the signals you might set up for your pages will be completely ignored if for some reason those pages get indexed and there's a lot of interaction by the user end. And this means that now you have to look at those pages to see whether you put it, removed them or disallowed them from the robots text file by mistake or if it was a deliberate overriding of the um, pages, then you want to know whether we should include them again. So in this case, what happened was that there were conflicting signals being given. So while the developers removed it because of whatever management request or the SEO request or the paid request that we don't want these pages added to the TX um, indexing, they left the robots tag in the code. So in this case, it was a primarily, when we looked at all the URLs, it was all the accounts pages or the search pages. And while they were removed from the robots.txt, over here they said index follow. Now you're saying crawl, don't crawl, and then index. Conflicting signals, again, your crawl budget is being wasted. You're basically telling Google they shouldn't trust the signals you're setting. You're delineating that priority you want to give to all the pages of your website and ensuring it doesn't get value. You should always be cognizant of what different signals are being given by the different pages of your website. You should ensure there's no conflict going on because that's the only way your search is going to become more efficient and the Google bots are viewing and indexing your website the way you want it to be indexed. So moving forward. Crawl budget and crawl waste. What do I mean by that, right? So yesterday's session discussed JavaScript and coding. Our senior technical analyst discussed JavaScript, and he alluded to the fact that previously bots were unable to read and render JS. But today the reality is that bots are able to read most aspect of the web pages. Google's Gary Isles recently said we can now render and read the entire web. Not exactly accurate, right? I mean, Googlebot is great. It's very, very innovative. However, a lot of times it makes assumptions that are not actually correct, which is why Google is now going back to its human interaction by having human editors come in. And 
So having said that, Google still has, bots still have a long way to go before they become proficient in actively reading accurately the various pages and signals that are available on every website. So every website has a predetermined crawl budget. How is that crawl budget set? As I said, if you give the correct signals and you frequently update your website, chances are you're going to be crawled more frequently because Google loves you know, new and fresh content. So let's say you have like sales going on every week, you're updating it. Chances are Google, chances are Google will want to, Google bots will want to come and crawl your website. The, what happens is if you have too many errors there, it's gonna stop crawling it. Your crawl budget will go down. Recently, John Muller said in terms of just speed and performance, he said, if the Google bot does not get a response from your website within two seconds, they might bounce off and not come back until an X amount of time. Again, yesterday, um, Angel referred to that as the first wave and second wave in indexing. First wave is they crawl the web pages. Second wave is when they index it. If in the first phase they're coming across as errors, they're not going to index your site very easily. So that's crawl budget. What's crawl waste? Crawl waste is when you have a lot of pages that don't necessarily need to be indexed. That could be the dynamic parameters that are just duplicate pages. They may be search pages, you know, when people are searching on your website. Those are all filters. You don't need them to be indexed because they provide no extra value from the original URL. So Google bots do a lot of things wrong from the retailer's pers perspective if the right signals are not given. They tend to prioritize pages that have absolutely no value. In this case, it could be the dynamic parameters. And if the crawl pages that are dynamic have been blocked by the developers via robots tags, but conflicting signals are given, again, you're wasting your crawl. If they're crawling 500 pages of your website every day and 250 of those have no value, you're wasting your crawl. So don't waste your crawl budget, optimize it. So using the Google Search Console for your own needs, right? You have to diagnose and understand what you're looking at. So the first thing to optimize the, um, the bloat is first ask yourself, okay, how many SKUs do you have? How many static pages are there on the website? How many canonical pages are there on the website? So let's say you have 50,000 SKUs. When you look at the search console, there should be approximately anything between 45 to 65,000, let's say, being indexed because that gives you a good variable. If you're saying you have 50,000 SKUs and about 100,000 pages are being indexed, that means there's something going wrong. So what you really have to look at is does the search console, Google Search Console report reasonably match the number of pages you actually have? If it doesn't, there's some dissonance going on. You really need to find time to pull the weeds with no index, canonical, robots.txt, no follow tags, and ensure everything is being done in the right way. Then we go into index bloat, right? When we're looking at the index bloat, if you have like 100,000 pages indexed when it should only be 50,000, you need to now understand what's going on, right? Start checking the no index URLs. As I showed you, you know, in the previous slides, when you've no indexed a page and then you're putting, you know, um, giving them signals by putting it in the sitemap, you're actually causing the index to get bloated. Are your canonicals being indexed properly? Do you, a lot of times I'll see clients, they're gonna, they have the canonical set up, but then they have canonicals to the duplicate pages as well. It's not canonicalized, they're actually canonicals. So now you have duplicate pages, you're getting indexed as well. You have to ask yourself, are any of the pages blocked by the robots.txt being indexed? Again, referring to my previous slide, it happens again when conflicting signals are given up. So the Google Search Console is a great place to understand the site architecture and the way your site is being indexed. Why is that needed? Because Google gives each page page authority, right? So your domain has a certain value and your pages have a certain authority. If you're giving them too many incorrect signals, your page value starts going down. If you have one page for a specific product, but your dynamic pages, your search pages are getting indexed, 
you're diluting that value. So instead of getting all the value for that one canonical URL, you're actually saying, hey, we have 10 pages for this one product. So rather than each one, one page being given like, let's say, eight out of 10, now that eight is being dispersed against that 10, and you're not only losing ranking, you're losing brand authority because you're not providing any value to the user. Another thing that we've seen happen when these sort of cases take place is that for some reason, it does have an effect on your paid CTR as well. We had one client that had immense pay, you know, um, indexing bloat. We had, maybe they had like around 500 SKUs maximum, but they had like 5 million pages getting indexed. Regardless of the ranking, and we got great ranking, the paid team was doing great, but CTR and revenue was not being reflected. The minute the problem was identified, within one week, revenue, impressions, CTR, everything started going through the roof. That means sometimes you don't even realize what sort of impact it's having on your website. Moving forward, you know, through the web console, you have the mobile usability section. In this day and age where everything is about mobile speed and performance, you have to make sure that's working. Sometimes, you know, your developers will make changes and image will be uploaded that's out of SKU. This is where you look at it. You know, it'll tell you the viewport set for a specific page is not working properly. The fonts are too small. Um, all you have to do is go there, look at the URLs, pull them out, give it to your developer. They fix the problem and you submit for validation. Always, always remember to submit for validation because eventually Google will crawl and fix the problem. But if you take control of that, it'll do it faster. So over here, you just have a snapshot. This is what it looks like. You know, you have 5.9 valid. You have a couple of uh, mobile issues. The product um, section for this is basically where the schema is seen with structured data up and coming. Structured data errors can be seen here as well. And right now, I wouldn't give too much credit to this simply because Google is constantly updating their structured data validation. And a lot of times I've seen that when I go into the um, developer's area in um, the Google's developer tools and all, even their own code that they give as samples can have errors. So I take it with a grain of salt. If sometimes it's showing a field that doesn't apply to your website, just ignore it. So moving forward, manual and security. Again, this is one of the most important aspects because it provides information on whether there is a manual penalty on your website or there are any security issues. Recently, one of my clients had his blog hacked. It was on WordPress, the other website was on a platform. It was hacked. Immediately, we got an email. It was, I think, six in the morning when we saw this, and we realized that it was coming in the SERPs as well. So you get a snippet in the SERP which says, this site has been hacked right above your organic listing and in the paid listings as well. So it's very important to keep an eye over here. You know, Every few weeks, just go in there, check, you do get an email if it's been hacked or if there's a manual penalty, but just to keep on top of it because there might sometimes be lag or delays, you wanna make sure that you check this weekly. Moving forward, almost you know, there, what do you wanna look at the index coverage report? What is the most important aspect? The index coverage report will give you the best way to identify the indexing issues. It allows you to check the number of valid indexed pages. It will also give you the number of excluded pages, number of pages with errors or warnings. Now, excluded pages are not always something that you have to worry about, but I would still go in and keep an eye on them simply because sometimes they might be excluding a page that is important to you. And then you can take that URL and resubmit it, or it might be excluding some canonicals that you feel are important. Why are they excluding it is something that comes up then. You have to start looking at the technical aspects again, look at the content aspects, and try to understand why those URLs are being excluded. Otherwise, it can be a very high number. As long as they're getting excluded from indexing, you're fine. So another thing for the owners, business managers, e-commerce managers to look at is, as I said in the, you know, in the beginning, look at the number of indexation errors. If your tech team is doing a good job, your organic team is doing a good job, your in-house teams are doing a good job, those errors should steadily decline. As long as it's decline or it's just you know very, very static, you're in a good place. But the best, the most important time to look at it is when you have migration taking place, when you are making changes to a website, even if it's as simple as closing down a specific category 
or you know creating 404s because uh, certain certain products are out of stock whatever the reason may be when there's a change on your website that's when you you know a week after you would go in and just keep an eye on it to ensure it's not something you might have missed so while most seo experts and developers use it i do recommend that business owners and digital marketers make them some self familiar with it a lot of times we depend too much on the teams and not enough on our own knowledge and that can cause things to fall between the cracks so while digital marketing again doesn't work in silos either i mean some change made by the paid team can have an effect on organic so just making sure everything is working as it should be just get yourself familiarized with the console. So coming into, bringing this to an almost end, ask yourself, what would Googlebot do? Your website will be crawled by both Googlebot Desktop and Googlebot Mobile. So you have your website, ask your developer to keep an eye on the log files to see how the website is being crawled. It's very, very important. The log file will be found on the server very heavy, so you don't need to necessarily have it for a whole month. But just, let's say, on a weekly basis, say, can I have the bot, um, log analysis for the day? And that'll give you an idea of if a bot, you know, the Google bot came onto your website, how, which pages they visited, which part of the website they've spent more time on. It just allows you to validate what you feel is important on the website and ensure that Googlebot is finding those same importance on the pages. Secondly, you have to try to understand how Google sees your website. For that, obviously, check Search Console weekly to ensure that errors remain low. If you keep an eye on the Search Console, you can usually spot technical issues early on and rectify them before they start impacting your results because the sooner you fix it, the faster Google will crawl your website and the faster you'll get re-indexed or not have an impact on your website. So in the beginning of this you know, presentation, we talked about indexing, crawling, and ranking. Why didn't I discuss it here? All these things have an impact on ranking, but it's about a 50% impact. There's so many other things that come into play. It's UX, intent, context, quality, so many brand authority that I can't really go into it in detail here, but having said that, when we've done technical audits for our, audi audits for our clients and we have started implementing the changes, we see at times anything between a 45% to 60% impact on traffic revenue within a three to six month period. That does depend on how many errors there were, what sort of errors there were, the industry as well, but generally, we always, always see an improvement in that way. So if you can't, if you don't do active SEO on your website, the technical audits are very important to at least keep your help, um, website healthy. All right, awesome. Thank you so much, Hala. Next up, we're going to be doing another poll question. So after listening to today's presentation, how prepared are you to address a technical SEO issue on your site? Please take a moment to um, fill out our poll. All right, perfect. It looks like a lot of you guys found this um, presentation today to be very helpful. So as you send in your questions, I do want to remind everyone that NetElixir not only offers services in SEO, but we also offer a variety of solutions such as paid search, organic search, paid social, web analytics, consulting and CRO, Amazon, e-commerce, and tech services. If you're interested in learning more, we actually are going to be doing a whole month of webinar search, um, so modern search. So it's a series of webinars that we're going to be having throughout the month of May. If you're inter interested in attending, please sign up at netelixir.com slash modern search. And of course, as a reminder, we are doing a giveaway this week. If you have not participated yet this week, you still have time. So all you'd have to do is um, just have to attend two of the three webinars, which I see a majority of you have. And you must comment on at least one of the SEO week trivia posts that are up on our LinkedIn. All right, so now we're gonna take some questions for Hala. 
Our first question comes from Dahlia. Dahlia wants to know, how often should a new website be crawled versus one that may be a few years old or over a decade old? How frequently it should be crawled basically really depends on how frequently you're updating it. As I said, the Google bot usually crawls fresh content very, very um, frequently. If it's a you know, website that you don't update as frequently, even though it's just one or two product pages that you're updating, updating, mostly it'll be those pages that will be crawled and the whole website might not be. So it really depend, does not depend on how old the website it is. It's more about the fresh content there. All right, awesome. And we have another question from Felix. Felix would like to know, what kind of website changes do you see most commonly cause an indexation errors? It has to be the migration. When migrations take place, usually um, business owners don't think it'll have an impact. Something as simple as changing a domain has a huge impact. Changing from one platform to another, creating a new theme on certain platforms, all of them have major impact on the site performance. So it's extremely important to ensure that you have a plan in place when those sort of changes are taking place. All right, perfect. Are there any more, more questions? So we have a question from Amy. Amy would like to know, how do the bots know if the website has been updated unless they crawl it? Well, again, it comes down to the frequency. If it comes to your website, you have a sitemap, which usually you can put in how frequently it's updated. And basically, they know when a site is being updated because they might crawl it and not index it. So if they see that, for example, news websites, right, they are they have to be crawled every single day and sometimes out on an hourly basis. So that, you know, history is always captured. So the more frequently you update it, the more frequently it's gonna get crawled. And that's why we suggest, I mean, we have clients who say we haven't updated a website for five years. You have to update, at least give it a facelift every year. And then a major rehaul should take place at least every two years. All right, perfect. We're gonna move on. We do. We would like to encourage you to download our new voice search book, which is our own research on how consumers are integrating voice search into their everyday lives. You can easily download this ebook at netelixir.com slash voice search. Also, as Hala mentioned in her presentation, an SEO audit is very important. So we're encouraging everyone that joined these webinars to sign up for a free Google visibility audit. By signing up, you'll receive a report showcasing whether your site is properly being rendered by any present JavaScript. If it is, NetElixir will include the best practices and recommend solutions. If it's not, NetElixir can provide a more efficient way to implement methods to improve your site's page speed um, on best practices. So if you're interested in this audit, please sign up at netelixir.com slash SEO audit. All right, and this concludes our SEO week for 2019. Thank you everyone for joining. I am going to be announcing a, woman, a winner today at four o'clock. I'll send you an email, so you should be receiving one from me. And we hope to see you next month in May. Take care. Thank you, everyone.